Mm-hmm. We are joined by Creighton head coach Greg McDermott. We'll get started with an opening statement. Again, a reminder to, to media, if you have a question, please uh, use the raise hand function at the bottom of the dashboard. And when you're called on, please state your name and affiliation first. Coach, if you give us an opening statement, then we'll go to questions. Well, you know, first of all, con- con- congrats to the Zags. Uh, you know, Coach Few does a, a fabulous job. Uh, this is the third time in four years that we've played them, and I just have uh, the utmost respect for just how they go about their business, uh, you know, how they play the game. Uh, they play the game the right way. Uh, they're, they're incredibly unselfish. Um, and the, the names and some of the numbers have changed over the course of the years that we've played them. But, the, you know, their efficiency and their, uh, the unselfish nature with way, the way they play the game has not changed. So uh, credit to them. Obviously, the start of the second half was huge for us. We really felt like, uh, you know, for us to, to have an opportunity, we had to win that first four-minute timeout. Uh, and instead, they were able to take that lead from 10 to 14. And, and uh, you know, then it's an uphill battle against a team like that. Thanks, Coach. We'll turn it over to questions for the media. We'll start with John Niatawa. John, please go ahead. What did they do, Greg, to kind of keep you guys off balance enough offensively, just in terms of, you know, not being able to score with them? I know it's tough to do, but like you had some stretches there where it was tough to get buckets. Yeah, you know, we had some – I thought we had some decent looks. Uh, you know, I, I thought – you know, DJ had some good looks at threes. Dens did. Mitch missed a couple uh, that he's normally going to make. Uh, we missed a few around the rim. Uh, but, you know, we talked all week, like, you you have to score to play with Gonzaga. Um, and we just didn't score enough. I thought, you know, we forced 16 turnovers. Um, you know, and we we tried to really protect the paint early in the game uh, and, and kind of turn them into a jump shooting team, at least in transition. And, to their credit, you know, Nemhard in particular uh, really made us pay for that. Uh, him and AI uh, really did a great job hitting some of those shots, and that really kind of forced us to stretch out a little bit more. And once you get stretched out against them, uh, you're asking for trouble because of you know Timmy's ability to to play on the on the on the block. Next, we'll go to Matt DeMarinas. Matt, please go ahead. Yeah, Matt Dean Marinas, White and Blue Review. Uh, Mac, when, when Christian got that second foul, what did you see in terms of how Gonzaga was able to get that separation that really ended up, I mean, it kind of turned that single one two possession game into a 10 point game from there? Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know that it was so much, you know, obviously Christian's presence on the floor is huge to us, but I, I thought Ryan went in and did some good things. We had a stretch in that period of time you're referring to in the first half where we we settled for a lot of mid-range shots uh, and some of them were challenged mid-range shots Uh, you know instead of getting deep into the paint setting our feet and making some plays uh, you know off that jump stop and Gonzaga makes you do that you know they force you into that Uh, but uh, you know they're they're not only a good offensive team they're a really good defensive team next we'll go to Steve McGargy Steve please go ahead Steve McGargy, Associated Press. You just said they're not only a good offensive team, they're a really good defensive team. What is it specifically that makes them so effectively effective defensively? Well, I think they have a lot of interchangeable parts, one through four, certainly. And then, uh, you know, when, when Watson comes in for, for Timmy, then they switch you five ways some, and Watson moves his feet well enough to keep some guards in front. But, you know, when, when Suggs and Kispert and Emhart and AI, you know, they can switch screens and switch a pin down and take something away, you um, you know that uh, that that can be very disruptive on the defensive end, and then you know Timmy just kind of controls that paint pretty well. And and as I said, uh, you know they, it's a different look with Cook because his ability to get up under you defensively, uh, and certainly uh, Suggs can do that as well. Uh, but uh, you know they're not. This is not a one-trick pony. I mean this these uh, these guys can play on both ends of the floor. Next we'll go to Rex Smith. Rex, please go ahead. Rex Smith, WOWT. Uh, Mac, when you guys first got to Indy, uh, you talked a little bit about what this group has meant to you over these past two years. Mm -hmm. Now that this run has come to an end, can you just reflect a little bit about how special these players and this run has been for you? Yeah, that's that's what I told them in the locker room. You know, don't uh, uh, you know, don't don't be sad that it's over, but you know, 
smile because it happened. You know, this two-year run with this core group is, has been incredible. Um, you know, a Big East championship and the celebration that went with that on the floor after we defeated Seton Hall to get a share of the league title last year. Uh, you know, and then finishing a few percentage points uh, behind Villanova this year for another championship, getting to the final of the Big East tournament, and then, you know, really blazing a new trail for our program, getting to the Sweet 16. And, and that took... Uh, Took the effort of a lot of people, but those seniors in particular, you know, Jacob Epperson's, uh, you know, talk about perseverance and, and fighting through adversity. I don't think anybody embodies that uh, any more than Jacob has in my 32 years of coaching because of everything that he's been through. And he keeps coming back with a smile on his face and uh, and has been such a great teammate. Denzel's willingness to, um, to play a totally different role. Uh, to embrace that defensive stopper role that was so important uh, in the first two games of this tournament to get us here with the job that he was able to do on McLaughlin and Preston. Uh, you know, and Mitch, I've recruited Mitch in eighth grade, and, and it, you know, it's hard to believe this is over in a blink of an eye. And while we'll miss, on the, m miss Mitch on the basketball floor uh, and in the locker room because he's such a great teammate, uh, you know, I, I hope someone can fill the void in the community uh, because he's 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 engaged himself in our community uh, with young people, with boosters. Uh, you know, like very few guys that have that have played for us. And then DJ's uh, uh, he's been our heart and soul. You know, he's uh, his energy, his his passion. Uh, you know, his commitment to improvement. Uh, has been incredible during the four years that he's been here. So uh, I know they're hurting right now, but I hope when this is over they can look back and, and appreciate and celebrate the magnitude of what they've accomplished the last two years. This question is from Matt Foster. Matt, please go ahead. Matt Foster, KUTV. Uh, Mac, how much can a trip to the Sweet 16 help build this program to even – greater heights well you know it just uh it shows what's possible if you get a group of guys that'll fight for each other and and stay committed to a common goal uh, a lot of special things can happen and uh you know, that's something that I talked with the guys as they were coming off the floor, uh, the guys that are returning next year about, you know, we want to get back to this point. And there's a lot of effort that goes into that and work that goes into that. Uh, so, you know, you know, we'll, we'll uh, obviously we're going to lose some really, really good players. And, uh, you know, we, we've got to uh, regroup from that. Uh, but, uh, you know, our expectation is that, you know, we want to compete for championships year in and year out. Next, we'll go back to John Niatawa. John, please go ahead. Just what was it like, Greg, this last week? Um, prepare, I mean, it's such a tough challenge to prepare for this Gonzaga team, and, and you guys are going to dig into all the details. But what did you notice from your guys as you kind of ready for this thing? And, um, you know, did you have a sense of how they'd come out and play? Yeah, I mean, I think you, I think you saw. I mean, it was, what it was, at 28, 25, 10 minutes into the game, and, you know, we were having a hard time stopping them, but they were having a hard time stopping us at that point too. So I think our guys were focused and, and ready to play and understood what we had to do. And, you know, we had to take some chances on some, on some of their guys on the perimeter to try to plug some things up uh, because of their ability to get to the rim and transition and get it to Timmy in transition. Uh, we mm -hmm. wanted to take Kispert away in the first half in particular. DJ did a great job of that. Uh, so our, our guys were focused. It's, 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 challenging because you'd like to be able to celebrate um, an accomplishment like this with in particular with your family um, but certainly as well with your friends and and you know your, your fellow students and that just that wasn't possible this year you know it was 32 of us on the same hotel f floor for uh, going on a three weeks or four weeks whatever we've been doing it so uh, but I think they'll look back and appreciate this and and really enjoy the experience as they move forward. We have time for a couple more questions for Coach. If there are any other questions, please use the raise hand function. We'll get to a couple more. We'll go to Matt D. Marinas next. Matt, please go ahead. Hey, Matt, I guess I know, I know these questions are tough because the emotions are really raw right now, and you probably haven't had time to process it. But what, as the, the group as a whole, like when you look back on teams and try to take away things that you'll remember most about them. What is this group? What are you going to appreciate most? Do you think about this group and just the, the waters that they had to navigate in, you know, kind of unprecedented times? Yeah, I, I think it's, I think it starts with being picked seventh or eighth to win the league, you know, in, in our league standings preseason last year. Uh, and the, and the focus that they had 
uh, to prove everybody that that was a mistake. Um, and, you know, and then this year we were picked to finish second, and sometimes living ec- up to expectations can be more challenging than exceeding expectations. Um, and we were able to do that. You know, when, when, the, when the bell rang, they were ready to go. And, uh, and I'm really, really proud of them for that. And obviously we've had to navigate through some tough stuff the last month uh, together, and th- those were some challenging times. But, you know, when you have good people in your locker room, um, you, you have a chance to get through those tough times and you know I'll I'll forever be indebted to them for uh, you know accepting me for who I am and that I'm a person that makes mistakes um, and that uh, you know I'm going to continue to work uh, to be a better person as a result of my mistake. Next we'll go to Theo Lawson. Theo please go ahead. Theo Lawson with the Spokesman Review in Spokane, Washington. Uh, what aspect of the Gonzaga team do you think will make them tough to beat in the next uh, week, week and a half? You know, I, I, the thing that jumps out at me is, you know, Kispert had two points at halftime, and we're still down 10. You know, and he's so valuable to what they do, and, and obviously we committed a lot to take him away. Uh, there's so many ways that they can beat you. Um, you know, obviously they're elite scoring at the basket and at the rim. They had 50 points in the paint on us again today, and that's with us trying to take take that part of their game away. So I, I think it's their balance, um, and, I, and I, I've said it in preparation for this game. It's, it's one of the best passing teams I've seen, you know, one through five in that starting lineup in college basketball in a long time. I, I just think when you make a mistake, uh, they have the patience and they have the ability to make you pay for it because of their ability to pass. Take one last one from John Yatama. John, go ahead. I mean, we've we've asked you about Marcus a lot this year and in the last couple of weeks, but just um, if you can sum up sort of his tournament run, maybe his March in general, we just seem to be playing really good basketball, led the way for you guys here down the stretch. Yeah, I mean, it's it's no secret it's been a journey for Marcus this year because of you know going back to last March with the injury and you know really missing most of his off season as a result of that. And then having a, a setback that was a different of a different nature uh, in October, where he missed significant practice time leading up to the season, and then he had a little setback during conference, uh, the conference season, um, where he, where he missed a couple of games, and we had to get him kind of back. Uh, but I think you what you've seen the last month is the Marcus Zigorowski that built upon all the great things that he did last year. And you know, without the injuries that he had to fight through this year, I mean, the guy would have been a, a slam dunk all american again a first or second team because of because of the he's played at such a high level and he's impacted winning in so many different ways so uh, you know he's back healthy uh he's he's got an unbelievable competitive nature uh that everybody's seen um and has been an absolute you know pleasure to coach and you know he's gonna have some decisions to make on his future uh when the time is right and will support whatever he chooses to do uh, 100% because he's uh, he's certainly given his heart and soul uh, to the Creighton Blue Jays. And, and you know whether he's back a year or not, we we really appreciate the impact that he's had on our program. And before I before I leave, I just I'd be remiss if I didn't thank uh, the NCAA uh, and the city of Indianapolis uh, for the job that they've done in hosting this event. Um, until you're part of the bubble and you see the coordination that goes into something like this, um, you don't fully understand or appreciate uh, the planning, the organization uh, that it has taken uh, to pull this thing off in a safe way for everybody involved. And obviously it's been an incredible experience for us. And part of, part of the experience being as good as it was is not just the organization and how well it was run. It was the people that we were interacting with, um, you know, some of our hosts that we were going to on a daily base with question, basis with questions and how they, at, a, at the snap of a finger, they were there to help. So this is, a, they've taken a, an unprecedented difficult year and created a, a very positive environment uh, for these young people to try to, to, try to enjoy uh, what's been a tough year. Uh, because of the time that they put into this. So, uh, you know, hats off uh, to the NCAA and, and the city of Indianapolis for uh, doing a first class job with this tournament. Thank, Thank you for joining us, Coach. Thanks. Congrats on a great season. Thank you. We we'll join momentarily by Marcus Zagorowski.
Let's take it off for just a second. And we are joined by Marcus Zagorowski, and we'll begin the press conference. Again, for members of the media, please use the raise hand function to indicate that you'd like to ask a question. And when you're called on, please state your name and affiliation first. We'll get started with Matt D. Marinas. Matt, please go ahead. Hey, Marcus. When you uh, when you experience what it's like to play against Gonzaga, what's different about preparing for them versus actually getting on the floor and just seeing the pace and the, the way that they go about doing what they do? Yeah, they just they play so fast and they're so efficient, you know, with everything they do. Like there's no lapses, there's like you just can't take a you can't take not a, not even a play, you can't take a second off or them or else they're, they're gonna make you pay and you know it's it was it's tough to beat, you know. You know, there's it's what it comes down to, it's a tough team. It's one of the best teams I ever played. But uh, congrats to them. Next we'll go to John Niatawa. John, go ahead. Yeah, John Niatawa with the uh, Omaha World Herald. What, Marcus, was it disheartening to not see some shots fall? Not necessarily you in particular, but your team. I mean, you guys created some good looks in the first half, but they just didn't go down. And then, you know, you look at the scoreboard, you're down 10 at half. Did, did that impact you guys at all? Um, You know, I, I don't think so. You know, the game is a make or miss game, but, you know, we're going to miss shots. You know, I think we're good enough to still miss shots and still, you know, win, win games. And we've shown that this year. It's just, you know, obviously against a team like that, you know, at this time of the tournament, the Sweet 16, you know, you know, you would want to have the, some of those shots going. You know, all of us, including myself. But um, you know, it's it happens, and you know, like I said, congrats to uh, Gonzaga. Again, for media members, if you have a question, please use the raise hand function. We'll get to as many as we can. Rex Smith, your line's open. Go ahead. Rex Smith, WOWT. Marcus, it's been a heck of a two-year run from you guys going back to last year with the Big East Championship in the regular season, then losing the tournament, you having a surgery coming back this year, dealing with all the stuff you've dealt with, the pandemic and everything. Can you just kind of talk a little bit about what this two-year run has been like for you guys? Yeah, it's been it's been incredible. You know, I'm just so proud of everybody on this on this team. You know, these past, you know, even guys who were on the team last year, you know, they're, they're, they're a part of this, you know, they're, the, you know, they're the reason why we're here as well. And, you know, I'm just so proud of everybody. And, um, you know, I think, we, I mean, you know, we played our, we played our hearts out, you know, you know, I just want to say thanks to all the fans who just kept supporting us and, you know, through tough times and through, you know, everything, especially for me, for my injury, you know, you guys, you know, you know, just always help me, you know, help me get, help me, help me get uh, through it and, you know, um, just sorry we couldn't go further, but you know it is what it is, and um, I'm happy with it. I'm happy uh, for, for my teammates. Matt Foster, please go ahead. Matt Foster with uh, KETV. Marcus, obviously this season has been anything but normal from the regular season to the tournament. So when you look back on this year and your tournament experience, what, how will you kind of remember this season? Uh, you know, it was a grind and, you know, it just, you know, I, I'm just, like I said, I'm so, so proud of everybody involved. You know, it was such a tough year and, you know, we didn't miss a game. You know, that's, I think we're one of the only teams in the country to be able to do that. And, you know, guys were really on point, not only on the court, but off the court. And um, my competitive side is probably be pissed off because, you know, we, we lost, but, you know, that's life. You know, you're going to lose in life and now, now what's the next step, man, you know. It happens. Next, we'll go to Theo Lawson. Theo, please go ahead. Theo Lawson with the spokesman review in Spokane, Washington. Was there something you guys were trying to, to take away from Gonzaga that maybe freed up some of their three-point shooters for, for a lot of open shots there? Um, you know, we noticed that, you know, they get a lot at the rim. You know, all five of their players, they get easy layups and easy baskets at the rim. And we wanted to, you know, really – Pack the pack the paint in and try and make them beat us by taking jump shots. But um, they obviously hit shots. You know they got hot early and kind of kept that going. But you know a team like that, you know you kind of gotta. You know they just don't beat themselves and it's just it's tough. You know it's it's hard to explain. But you know we just it was their night tonight. It's it's life. You know it was their it was their day. 
Next is a follow up from Matt DeMarinas. Matt, please go ahead. Marcus, I know the future's uncertain, especially what you guys just went through. I mean, but is there something that in particular that you're going to, or a few things that you're going to appreciate about this run and just the kind of way you guys finished the season out? And I know it was a goal to make history and you did that. So even though it hurts right now, is there something you're going to appreciate about what you guys were able to do? Yeah, everything. You know, you know I appreciate everything. Well, you know, this is, you know, we'd be in hotels for 20 hours of the day. You know, we wouldn't go outside for a few days. Like it was, it was, a, it was a grind, but you know, I wouldn't want to do it with any other group of guys. And, you know, it was, you know, something I'll remember, you know, for the rest of my life, you know, what we went through, you know, it was definitely hard on the mental and it's, it's something we, none of us have ever experienced. But like I said, I wouldn't want to do it with any other group. And yeah. Next question is a follow up from John Niatawa. John, go ahead. Yeah, John Niatawa with the uh, World Herald. Uh, Marcus, I mean, I know we're asking the questions and you're <laughs> being respectful in answering them, but it, it does seem that you're, you've been able to sort of take it, see, like kind of see the big picture. Like knowing you, I know how competitive you are and how much this loss stings, but yet you've been able to sort of uh, appreciate sort of the long run, the long journey that you guys have been on together. Has Does that surprise you at all? Just that ability to kind of like, um, you know, see the whole, the whole deal here in this moment that where it's, you know, really painful and it stinks obviously to, to lose. Yeah. You know, I've came a long way when it comes to that, you know, the old Marcus would have been crying over there probably. I don't know, but, uh, yeah, it's like, it's just something, you know, that coach Mack has taught me, you know, through since I've been here and just being around people who, you know, really who know what it's, who, who's been in my position, you know, my, my, my parents, my, my older brother, you know, it's, you know, in life, you know, you're going to lose. That's just what it comes down to. You'll probably fail more more times than you succeed, but you can't succeed without failing. And, you know, that's that's life. And, you know, the character of a man is how you bounce back from this. And, you know, I know everybody in that locker room, you know, wants to, you know, bounce back. You know, everyone's hurting, obviously. You know, as a competitor, you you lose and you have that fire inside of you. But, you know, bigger picture, you know, you know, we had a season. Um you know, we got to play in a, in a in a great environment in front of our fans, and you know, it was like like I said before, my twin brother got his basically got his season canceled, and he just had like three games, you know, just exhibition games, and you know that don't really count for anything. So how can I complain about you know the situation that I'm in when he's going through something like that? And um, I was just happy to be able to have a season and to be able to you know make history during this season is something special and something I'll never forget. And um, I'm just so proud of everybody involved. Next question is from Matt Foster. Matt, please go ahead. Marcus, I know you have some important decisions ahead of you, but what did it mean to you personally to be able to represent Creighton and play for the Blue Jays on, on this national stage and represent the university? Oh, it's everything. You know, this is the best decision of my life to come to Creighton, you know, um, you know, it was a gutsy decision. I know it's so far from home and something different. You know, it's a whole different lifestyle out here, you know, different people. And But I but I fell in love with it when I got here. And you know, I always have a place in my heart, you know. It's just family over here. Everybody everybody in Omaha, you know, it's just it's my second home. And, you know, I wouldn't be the man or player today without, without you know, this program. And, you know, I, you know, I love everybody here. I love Coach Mack. I love the whole staff, all the players that came through here, you know. You know, I'll always have love for it. We have time for one final question for Marcus, if there is one. All right, Marcus, appreciate your time today. Thanks for joining us. Congrats on a great season. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. That'll conclude the Creighton Post Game News Conference. A transcript of Coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at ncaa.com slash transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Again, that's ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you.